Generally speaking, everything that we do in our lives, we weigh the pros, we weigh the cons, we study the odds, and we make a decision that has the odds in our favor. But there is a huge exception to that rule that so many of our fellow Canadians make, and that is when it comes to the Canada Pension Plan. And despite the odds, despite the statistics, despite the studies suggesting that it's good to delay the Canada Pension Plan uptake to a later date, fewer than 2% of our fellow Canadians actually take the Canada Pension Plan at age 70 compared to age 65, which is the default, or age 60, which is the earliest. So 98% of us uh, buck the odds, if you will, and take the Canada Pension Plan earlier. And there is a study that I'm gonna be covering off in this uh, video today. And it's gonna be talking about the logic of delaying the Canada Pension Plan. It's gonna be giving you some, some sound arguments and talking about some of the reasons that we do make this, what many would say, or what I would say is the incorrect decision to start taking money early, despite the fact how attractive it is to get your hands on the money. Um, and I think you'll be very interested in the study here. For those of you who are eligible for the Canada Pension Plan, the default start age is 65. Now, you can take it earlier. You can take it as early as age 60, but there will be a deduction for every month that you take it early, or you can delay it as far as age 70, and there's an increase in the long-term pension or the lifetime pension for every month that you delay that. I'm not gonna go through the specifics of this. If you do want more information on how the Canada Pension Plan works in more detail, I will include a link in the video here that you can go for that. For the purposes of this though, we are going to look at the sort of the standard or the mainstream process of analyzing, should I take it at 60, 65, or 70? What you normally see is uh, just a simple mathematical comparison that says, if I start taking my money early and pocket that money or invest that money, by the time I get to my older age, where's that break even point that it would have been better off for me to, how long do I have to live essentially to, to make that uh, pay off to, by waiting for a longer, uh, for a higher pension plan? The Big problem with this type of an analysis though is that it really ignores uh, what is called mortality risk. It ignores um, what will happen if you live a long and fruitful life. And in fact, it ignores what the odds are of you living a long and fruitful life. The comparison is relatively shallow, I would say. And in fact, in this study, which is put out by the Canadian Institute of Actuaries, they say a primary objective of this project is to move beyond shallow comparisons. And in this video, that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be taking this study, which uh, goes to a, a deeper dive in the actual numbers than using sort of a back of the envelope type of scenario. They've come up or they came up with a, a methodology here, which really almost is a one size fits all solution. Uh, I'll talk more about some anomalies a little bit later in the video, but um, when you look at this this question of do I take my pension plan or what uh, age do I start the pension plan, there are a lot of generalizations out there. And of course, we're all different. All Every Canadian has uh, different features. But what they've done here is they've created this study where really there is only two drivers that answer the question. One is investment returns that you would get on your money. Secondly is mortality. And the, the beauty of this study is it can be applied to a very, very broad audience. And we're gonna be looking at, at that uh, in our analysis today. We are going to be looking at a Canadian who is eligible for Canada Pension Plan, plans to retire at age 65, and has sufficient assets, whether RRSP, RIF, etc., to fund the gap if they decide to delay from age 65 to age 70. So those are really the two criteria. You have to be 65 uh, and retired, not continuing to work, and you have to have sufficient assets to fund that uh, liability. We're gonna talk about this in just a moment here. There are two main goals of the study, and I'll read those directly from their report. Goal one is to comprehensively quantify the trade-offs in delaying CPP payments, both in terms of risk as well as return for Canadians with various financial and personal circumstances, and two, to present the results so that they are meaningful and accessible to a wider audience, such as professionals in the financial service industry, to help better inform the decision about when to take up a CPP pension. The evaluation essentially is reduced to two questions. Number one, what are the risks and consumption trade-offs between one, delaying CPP payments to age 70 and using the RRSP or RIF savings to bridge the five-year gap between ages 65 and 70, and two, taking CPP payments at age 65 
and self-managing the RRSP slash RIF savings. Without spoiling the ending, the study does actually conclude that it's better to delay for most uh, Canadians. However, 95% of Canadians start taking their Canada Pension Plan at age 65 or earlier, and they're leaving a lot of money on the table um, as it turns out. The main benefit that is identified in this study is the fact that you end up, if you delay, or if you defer your Canada Pension Plan, you end up with a secure lifetime income that increases along with the consumer price index. So some of the risks that it fights are, it you know, fights the risk of losing purchasing power to inflation. It uh, eliminates the risk of uh, rate of return. So if you are investing money to make up for the, for the higher amount, you don't have to worry about uh, investment returns at all. And uh, a key element is the longevity. As long as you live, if you are a recipient of the Canada Pension Plan, it's going to be paying you your benefits. Now you can contrast that to living off an investment portfolio where um, if you run out of money, you simply run out of money. And uh, although if you have a ton of money put aside, um, that may not be a concern of yours, uh, but a lot of people uh, do in fact worry about having enough money to provide them uh, through their income, uh, through the retirement years, especially if they're planning on living to, uh, to a longer age. To get a little bit deeper into the specifics of the study, they really compare two main scenarios and they look at two different options. Option one is to delay the CPP payments from age 65 to 70 using a portion of RRSP or RIF savings or are called the bridging funds in this case to provide for withdrawals during that five-year period that exactly match the income that the CPP pension adjusted for inflation will provide when the individual takes it up at age 70 versus option two is to claim your CPP payments at age 65 and then self-manage the portion of the RRSP slash RIF savings that would otherwise have been used to bridge that five-year gap in option one over retirement so as to achieve the same net annual income as in option one throughout retirement, maintaining that level until death or the exhaustion of the bridging funds. To put that into graphical form, you'll see in both scenarios here, the green section at the top is for old age security benefits, employment pension benefits, other retirement income, savings, etc. That's That's consistent in both. On the left side of this graphic, it depicts the red box of withdrawing from your bridging funds from age 65 to 70, and then starting to take CPP at age 70 forward. The right side of the graphic illustrates taking CPP from age 65, so that's indicated by the blue arrow starting right at age 65, and supplementing the amount with bridging funds uh, in order to come up with the amount that you would have uh, added to your income had you waited for a longer period of time up until age 70. Now, a couple of really important uh, aspects of this study are in both options, this, the amount of savings that you need, the level of savings, is the same, it doesn't change. The only difference in the analysis is the timing of that CPP take up. So starting at 65 or starting at age 70. And also in the way that they've done things here, um, government pension and, and other your other sources of income are unaffected as you noticed at the top of the previous chart. Things like uh, guaranteed income supplement or your tax rate, uh, other pension income. These are all uh, independent and can be separated for a, a real clear example here of how you would be affected without factoring in all those other things that are normally um, considered as part of this complicated calculation that people often make. In fact, in this study, they can really reduce the entire uh, process here down into a simple formula. Now, this formula is a derivative or a distillation of a whole bunch of very complicated uh, math formulas that they used in the study. But essentially what it boils down to is this. In order to bridge this gap, you're going to need to have saved 7.35 times the amount of Canada Pension Plan that you would get at age 65. So it's the CPP benefit that you would get at 65 times 7.35. So as an example, let's use let's assume your, your Canada Pension Plan benefit would be $800 a month at age 65. So if you take that 800 times 12, you're going to get an annual pension of $9,600. And if you multiply that times that 7.35 number, you're going to end up with $70,560. The concept here now is that you then take out a fifth roughly of that fund every Every year, but there is a factor for inflation in, in there as well. So that by the end of the five years that you're taking money out of that uh, the, the gap fund to compensate for the lower CPP you'd be getting, um, you will have exhausted those funds, roughly that $70,000 worth over that time period. However, now till the day you die, you have a higher 
Canada Pension Plan benefit. The crux of this study really, in my opinion, is when you look at that scenario too and you say, what if I take my money out at 65? I invest that money, and this is the argument that is typically used. Um, how does that work out? And they look at two different scenarios. One is putting the money into risk-free assets, and one is elevating the game a little bit and putting things into uh, putting you know putting that gap fund into risky assets or risk assets. And the first scenario, which they call apples to apples, looks at taking the money out at 65, and in their analysis the odds are you're going to run out of money by age 80. And so only if you die before the age of 80 would you come out ahead if you took the money out starting at age 65. And that's a calculation a lot of people are willing to make, but the reality is statistically, where we are at today, uh, about one-fifth of females, only one-fifth, will die before the age of 80, and one-quarter of males will die before the age of 80. So in other words, you are betting on the fact that you will be dead before the longevity tables, before the life expectancy tables say that you will be. A fifth of females die before 80 and a quarter of males die before 80. So this is suggesting that that trade-off, if, if, you, if you live beyond 80, in most cases, you're going to be losing in this scenario. The second scenario, which they call apples to oranges, is where you take that extra money if you started CPP at age 65, and you actually put it into the market. So you're now taking some risk uh, with, that, uh, with, those, with that money, with those assets. And so we're gonna look at uh, what difference that makes. But before we do that, uh, it makes sense if you are a do-it-yourself investor, and especially if you're managing a portfolio that is in the risk markets, I would like to tell you just for a moment about our sponsor for today's video, which is Passive. You can use Passive to help you with your DIY investing and to manage your investments in a more efficient manner. And it's really easy to keep track of your holdings and see, for example, whether you're under or over your target allocations. If that's the case, when it's time to rebalance, you can use their one-click trade feature. And this is really powerful. It takes your entire portfolio, analyzes how accurate you are to your target allocations, then it automatically does the math for you and it builds a trade sheet showing you what you need to do to get back on track, to get back to your intended portfolio balance. Additionally, from the reporting dashboard, you can keep track of your total value over time, keep track of your dividends, and you can review your transaction history. So whether this is trades, dividends, contributions, any other account activity, it doesn't really matter. If you're looking for help on how to manage your portfolio and getting a, a better a sort of a bird's eye view, uh, I would encourage you to check out the link in the description below and see how Passive might be able to help you uh, with your portfolio management. So why would you choose to take a lower number today compared to a higher uh, guaranteed income five years down the road and invest that money yourself? Well, obviously the answer to that is because there's more potential. and. Um, in a scenario where you have a shorter life expectancy and you have a higher uh, return on your investment, there can be a scenario, obviously, where that would be uh, the better choice. But it does, uh, this choice does ignore some significant risks. Now, in the study, and this is a very fascinating part of the study I found, it's kind of the meat and potatoes of it all. They find that if you yield an average long-term return of 4% net of any fees, an age 65 male with longevity expectations, which would be 21.7 years, choosing not to delay CPP payments would face a 73% probability of receiving less income from the bridging funds and the CPP benefits than they had if they delayed the take up until age 70. Now, if this person had a lower longevity expectation, which would be 19.7 years, the probability would be reduced to 66. Now, women have greater longevity, so the financial trade-offs of choosing not to delay CPP are more pronounced, obviously, with a high longevity expectation, which for a woman age 65 is 24.2 years, there would be an 81% probability of receiving less income than if she had delayed CPP up until age 70. And even with low longevity expectations, the life expectancy is still 22.7 years. The corresponding proportion is only 76%. So we can see quite clearly by this study, I, I started this whole video by talking about the odds. And if we assess the odds as a Canadian, age 65, should we or should we not delay? The answer clearly is we should if we're playing the odds. Logic will also suggest, though, well, what if we generate higher rates of return? Um, this study does anticipate that, and they use what I think is a very fair 6% net return. So this is net of any fees, so we're talking about a 7 or an 8% return in most cases that you would generate. So um, often in retirement, you're not going to be investing in assets that would generate much more than that. But let's assume you net it out 
at that 6% rate of return over time. Even if investments were to stochastically yield a mean long-term net average after fees nominal rate of return of 6%, this extreme scenario results in a male with low longevity still facing a 51% probability of not achieving the same income as he would have through delayed CPP payments. When I look at this study, I see that the value of having the certainty of the longer term payments is really being overlooked uh, by uh, a, a lot of our fellow Canadians. I, mean, I guess there's really no uh, way to say it other than that. This study does highlight three particular, or makes three comments on three different scenarios where um, the whole analysis might not be applicable. Number one is it assumes that you have sufficient savings at age 65 to bridge that gap. So the, the analysis here doesn't really apply if you don't have those savings. But on that note, um, it's not a, a binary you, 65 or 70. If you have partial savings, you can still use this analysis to look at what if you delayed your CPP take up, say as long as possible. So maybe you had enough uh, savings to uh, bridge the gap up until age, um, you know, 68, for example. You could start taking it there and uh, you'd get much of the same benefits we're talking about here. Um, and they're also highlighted, there may be some particular circumstances related to the way the tax system works. So there's marginal tax rate issues that would be uh, very unique, but might be applicable. That would sort of throw everything here out. Um, so those are those are three scenarios that you probably should be aware of if you're uh, considering this overall strategy. On the other hand, if you can take the strategy, if you can delay your benefits, um, you can make up for things like a, a poor rate of return on your investments. Um, if the if we're in a high inflationary environment, um, this can help out there. And if you are living longer, you know, a benefit is if you live longer, there's no no timeline. You never run out of the Canada Pension Plan benefit. So it does. Um, help mitigate some of the risks. I mean, the number one risk and a, a huge concern people have um, who don't have a ton of extra money is what if I run out of money? What if I live longer and, and um, you know, just, just run short? So that's always a fear. Obviously, having a higher level of secure guaranteed income would be benefit there. The anxiety that goes along with that, it, it, it can't really be discounted. And if you are not a senior well into retirement uh, and you don't have that anxiety right now, you might not, um, you might not understand how... Uh, stressful that can be to even be worrying about these things uh, in a case where there's uh, changes in your family situation. So maybe it's a health concern um, or maybe you're, uh, you're, you're widowed, uh, then that's possible that you maybe lose out some pension benefits, et cetera, there. Um, and also don't discount the fact that if you have a fixed pension, but it's not uh, adjusted for inflation. Inflation will slowly and slowly and surely um, eat into your pension. So this will also help mitigate, even if you do have a secure income uh, by way of a pension, don't um, rule out the fact that that pension essentially becomes smaller and smaller um, as time goes by. One point on this, and this is always a controversial point when it comes to Canada Pension Plan is, um, well, what if I die early? And you know, you hear quite often, I. I put it in the plan all my life and I uh, and I save it and, and then I die and you know I don't get anything. The Canada Pension Plan is a risk sharing program. It's, it's, it's a mortality risk pooling type of scenario. So um, there's no doubt about it. Um, in a plan like this, just like life insurance, some people will buy insurance and die a day or two later. Other people will buy life insurance and pay for years and years and years uh, without collecting on the benefits there. So the, the in a plan like this, certainly those who live longer in retirement will benefit. Um, and those who die earlier or have a shorter life expectancy are going to lose out. That's just the way the whole uh, plan is structured. And, you know, I, I don't see with the, the volume of people in it, there's really no other realistic scenario that you could just guarantee everybody all the money without drastically um, increasing the, uh, the, the the level of, of premiums that we have to put into the plan in the first place to, to fund that. It would really be um, unworkable in my opinion. So if you have sufficient funding to bridge that gap from age 65 to 70, at least this study points in the direction of pushing that back. They're saying it's better to delay and there is essentially a very low financial reward to taking the payments earlier um, in most cases. For a ton more information on this type of topic, uh, do check out our Investing Academy. It's in the first link in the description below. And also, as I mentioned at the outset of the video, uh, check out uh, Adam Bourne's Parallel Wealth channel. Uh, speaking of wealth, it is a wealth of information when it comes to retirement planning, uh, pension planning, etc. So with that, I will thank you for watching the video and I do look forward to seeing you in the next video.